Okay, so we have a, uh, f a faculty member at Monta Vista here that uh, needs a, uh, a certified mechanic to sign him off on uh, on his tires. Uh, we got to go over his tires. We got to measure the the tread depth, and we got to measure the the air pressure to verify if it's good or the knee replacement. We got to check all the bul uh, bulbs, and we got to check all the fluids. And then we gotta check the wiper conditions, seat belts, and then notice any uh, uh, broken glass. Uh, so this is this is actually required if you are becoming uh, any any kind of state affiliation, as far as they want to verify your vehicle's safe. And so we're gonna do that for this person. So real quickly, tires. Uh, you're gonna check the tre the, tre uh, the tread depth, but it's more than just the tread depth. Okay. First thing you always do is run your hand over the top like this and you're feeling for any kind of wear pattern or any kind of inconsistency. So my hand's divided into three areas. So outside, middle, inside. Spread your fingers and it should be nice and smooth. This tire is worn on the inside and you can feel that with your hand. Okay. So sometimes it's bumpy which might be a, 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 a tire problem or a balancing problem. This tire, uh, obviously, we're worn on the outside, so we would have to check that with alignment. I just want to cover the uh, tire wear patterns that you commonly come across on a vehicle. So there's all kinds of different tire wear patterns, and they all mean different things, okay? So uh, first off, let's go with the easy one here. So uneven tire wear, okay? So the first one here on the left, uh, you have uh, a wear on the inside, or it could be the outside edge, depending on where the tire is on the car. Um, but anyways, uh, when you see this, that's an alignment problem. So it has to have the alignment checked. So the tires are not going down the road straight, or uh, they're leaning. So you need to do an alignment check with this first tire. The second tire here, you have tread in the middle, but uh, it's worn on the outside edges. This is a tire that's been driven with uh, low tire pressure, so it's underinflated. So this is an underinflation problem. The person didn't ever check their tire pressure. The next one is where the tires are, uh, the wear is in the middle, and then there's treads on the outside. This too is a t uh, tire pressure problem, and it's caused by uh, um, overinflation of the tire. The last one is like scallop uh, pattern, and that scallop pattern is caused by maybe an unbalanced situation or a suspension part that is causing the tire to bounce down the road. So these are the main four types of uh, tire wear patterns, okay? Uh, you get into other patterns too. Uh, this kind of reinforces it. You have the overinflation, the underinflation, okay? Uh, I talked about in the video that there's wear indicators on there. Uh, here's the wear on one side, uh, so a camber problem, which is alignment. Uh, if, if it's a feathered problem, then that feathering is caused by a toe problem with the alignment. So um, that's a pro uh, both of these two are alignment problems where the spotty choppy wear is caused by suspension problems or out of balance. So it's called cupping. And so cupping is a, uh, you have to check your suspension and you need to check to see if your tire is balanced. And what it ends up being, it ends up being real bumpy uh, as you rub your hand over it. So that's why I in, uh, insist when you check tires, you gotta rub your hand over the tire feeling for these different wear concerns. But we want to check our tread pattern, so we're our, our tread depth. So we're going to use a tread depth tool, and we're going to find the the thinnest spot. Now, obviously, this is a, pretty much on the end. This would be zero. Okay. So you look at the red. I just put it, push this down, put it right here, and it is at a zero on the tread depth tool. So this would this tire would fail inspection. Now we could go to the the middle section here. And then we're, looks like we're on three millimeter or three thirty seconds. So this is millimeters, this bar right here, or we could record it as 30 seconds, which is pretty much the same type of a measurement, same increment.
Uh, there are other ways to check tread depth. One of the other ways is there's uh, wear bars always built into the tire. When the tread becomes equal to that tread bar, like you see at the edge here, then the tire needs replacement. And where uh, you see it's recessed in, this would be, if it was all the way across like this, this tire wouldn't need replacement. We'd also replace the tire because of the crack. So any type of cracking condition, whether on the sidewall here or on a tire, uh, it would be a fail. Okay, so always check your tire with your hand. So I'm going to take my hand, I'm going to go, if the tire is rolling this way down the road, I want to go the opposite way over the top of the tire and feeling for that inconsistency and I don't feel any kind of wear pattern on this so that's good push my tread depth tool down I'm put it right in the middle here and it looks like the tire is worn evenly all the way across and then it looks like we are at 6 30 seconds right here so there's 30 seconds or 6 millimeters it's in the green so I would record that on my chart so that would be the right front tire. By the way, we're working on a Tesla. So good luck finding fluids. And uh, I'm just going to write down uh, uh, six millimeters. And it's good. Okay. And we do got to check our tire pressure. So uh, there's several places we could check our, tr our tread or our tire pressure uh, uh, amount. It could be written on the, usually written on the tires. And it looks like. 50 psi is what the pressure should be but we could also check the driver's door so let's check that will open yeah. i haven't opened a, a tesla before so this is new for me ah, all right here's the tire chart on the driver's door jam and you can see it'll tell you original tire size uh, i don't know if these are original or not um Here's the pressure, what it should be cold, 45 in the front and 45 in the rear. So this tells you what tires the car is equipped with and it tells you what pressure it should be. Okay, so we want to see 45 PSI. Let's go back. So we know the tire is 45 PSI when it's cold. It hasn't been driven in several hours, so it is cold. So I'm just going to take this tire pressure gauge and I'm going to push on it. And 44 PSI, that's close enough for me. So I'm good with this. Feel the tire, feels good, check for cracks, take the tread depth, measure that in the middle. There we go. Let's hit the tread depth bar. Oh, we're a little bit more worn in the back. Let's see, I'm gonna try it a couple places. Yeah, this does look like an older tire. So four millimeters, not six. So the newer the newer tires are on the front, which is what they should be. Um, I could say it's at five because we're a little bit below four. So maybe I'll go with five. And then let's check our, our tire pressure. It's still not a bad tire. It's just a little bit more worn than the front. So we're at 44. So it's still a good tire. I'm gonna mark down that it's five millimeter. View the tire, check for cracks, take the tread depth gauge, get in the middle of the tire. Yeah, this one's equal to uh, 5 millimeter or 532. Okay, check my tire pressure. 44, 45 should be good. Push, make sure you push these in. And 44, so this tire checks good too. Uh, one thing that needs to be mentioned is that when you're measuring tread depth, what is a bad tire? Well, for one, it tells you by color code, but the rule is you should be chaining your tire at 230 seconds. So here's the red, and you see there's zero, there's one, and then the two is right on the line of yellow and red. So if you're at 230 seconds, which would be right there, or two millimeter, you got to replace your tire. So he's really, these back tires, he's between four and five, which is right on the green right here and the yellow, right on the line. So he's good. Normally the first thing I would ask my customer to do on a, a safety check for the taillights would be to turn the headlights on and make sure that your taillights come on. But being a Tesla, this has a sun sensor on it and the 
uh, headlights come and tail lights come on automatically when it gets dark in the evening. So we'll still be able to test the signal with red lights. So could you go ahead and put on the left signal, please? Okay, how about the right? Turn that one off, and then can you hit the brakes? Can you put it into reverse also? Ah, there we go. So they're all working back here. So we're going to go back to our uh, inspection sheet for lights all in working order, yes. And none of them need to be addressed at all. The next thing we got to check are our fluids. Well, the only fluid is the windshield wiper fluid because there's no engine. So you want to show us how to do that? Since it's not our car and it's a Tesla, I'll let the owner go ahead and pull that up. It's all remote activated. And here's the power, uh, the windshield wiper fluid. And I could probably put some fluid in there for you. So we'll, we'll do that right now. All right, so I'm gonna do the customer favor, add some uh, um, windshield washer fluid, okay? Uh, you have to pre-mix it, it's a concentrate, so that's why I'm using just a plain old water bottle. He was kind of low. There we go, coming up. I can't see the water level, so I'm gonna go ahead and keep adding because this is just there we go. So you know, maybe a little bit over a uh, a liter I put in there, so it's all full now. Okay, we can sign them off on that. That's the only fluid you're gonna see on a Tesla. I'll let him close the hood. Again, the headlights here. We would normally check the headlights, but there's a sun sensor uh, probably up here. So there's a little dot right here you want, I want to zoom in. So this is the sun sensor right here, okay? And that sun sensor is going to dictate when those lights come on. And right now we're in full sun, so it's not going to turn the headlights on. The sun sensor I thought was this dot, and it was these dots right here. So what I ended up doing was I covered the sun sensor, and the headlights should turn on. And then I take my hand off, and the headlights should turn on. Huh. Well, anyway, so I could just... Oh, they just went off. Headlights are on auto. I can go ahead and turn the headlights on here and they'll turn on even though with uh, the light sensor on. You want to check it, Jordy? Yeah, it's, on. it's on. And then if I go to off, they should turn off. There we go. And I'm going to keep it on auto for myself. Perfect. So uh, the fluids, again, it's only the windshield washer fluid, so that is good. Now the seat belts, what we're going to do is we're going to buckle each seat belt and we're going to yank on it. Uh, windshield wipers, oh we have not checked that. So the wiper blades, let's go ahead and, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, lift these up and I'm going to run my finger underneath here, feel for any cuts or frays and it should be pliable and bendable and it is. And then you want to do the other one, okay. lift it up, slide your finger underneath it now do you mind if you hit the windshield wiper because that's the other part of the test so you feel it first and then he's going to hit the washer and we want to see how well it cleans okay and go ahead hit it again one more time yep you know hit the spray Okay, I see how it works. Yep, and what you're looking for here is any streaks, but if you notice, there's no streaks, so we're good on the wiper blades. So windshield wipers, we're good on that. And the last check is the seat belt. So we're gonna go inside, and we're just gonna put the seat belt. We're gonna clip it into the, the seat belt buckle and tug on it, and it's good, okay? Do that with each seat belt. Be careful, white interior. Dirty hands is not a good thing. That one's good. And this one goes in here. Each seat belt has to be checked. On the other side. Good. And the last thing is here. Driver's seat. And you'd be surprised how many people have a bad seat belt in their car. It's not an uh, uncommon thing. Let's update our chart and we're done. 
so seat belts they're in good condition also i could tell the the, the belt itself wasn't frayed sometimes you have to you would write down the belts are frayed and that's a bad thing so nothing uh no broken glass we already checked the glass but technically you would need to go over all the glass to make sure there's no chips or cracks especially in the windshield when you get nicks you don't want to see a crack going across your windshield okay a lot of people just live with it but if you're going to be using it for anything with the government you got to have no cracks so we're good on that so I'm just going to put down NA so the person knows that we checked it and then the mechanic signature and then today's date and now this is a legal document uh, we do got to put the license plate what year is this 2020. it's a 2020 yeah. and you want to read the license plate number yeah. BZZ -Z -Z. Yep. Okay, this is a legal document and he's good with this inspection.